Amen. Psalm 119. Verse 71. Reading in your hearing from the New International Version. Here's what it says. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. Amen. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. Yes, Amen. Amen. I want to talk today about good trouble. Yes, sir. Come on, Pastor. Amen. I want to talk about good trouble. Play with, pray with me, church, if you please. One of the difficulties of the faith, <clears throat> I will admit, mm-hmm. is learning how to grasp the fact. That bad things happening in your life can actually be good for you. Yes, sir. I admit that one of the greater challenges of the faith is to accept that even in your darkest hour Uh and even in your saddest tear, there is something in it that can actually be good for you. I admit Mm -hmm. that some of the pain we want to avoid the most has in it the thing that will mature us the best. Yeah. When you come to a religion like ours, and when you encounter a faith like yours and like mine, where you are hearing and reading about a God who is full of mercy Uh and a God who is full of grace and a God who is full of compassion, comfort, and consolation, you will find yourself at times wondering, where is he? With all of this compassion, comfort, and consolation, you'll wonder at times, where is he? Uh-huh. With all of this perfect peace and this peace that surpasses all understanding, you'll wonder at times, where is he? Yeah. With all of this mercy, grace, and benevolence, you will wonder at times and you will want to know where is he? Uh I'm trying to tell you that you can find yourself if you keep on living in a spot so tight and dark and so grim and dim that you cannot conceive that there could possibly be any good in it for you. Bills are due, but you don't have the money to pay. Sick in your body, but ain't but so much the medicine can do. Traumatized by the betrayal of friends, so it's going to take some time for you to heal. Devastated by the experience of loss, but you can't turn back the hands of time. Overwhelmed by the grief that follows someone's death. So you struggle to stay alive yourself. Uh Burdened under the weight of depression and despair. But you can't afford therapy. Tired of being caregiver and caretaker. But who else going to do it if you don't? Struggling to hold on to your own faith. Especially when everybody around you has either no faith or they're struggling to hold on to their faith just like you. Is anybody in church today? I'm just trying to tell you that if you keep on living, life will turn around on you. 
Life will change on you. Yeah. And life as you knew it will exist no more. Uh -huh. And you'll find yourself in a spot so tight and dark and so grim and dim that you cannot conceive that there could possibly be any good in it for you. But I've come to tell you today that God is a God who can take what was meant for evil yeah. and turn it around for your good. God is a God who can take what was meant to destroy you and can use it to build you up. And God is a God who can turn your bad trouble into good trouble. Is anybody praying with me? We know this is true in part because the word of God tells us so. Uh, you remember what we discussed on last Sunday that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That lines up well with what I'm trying to say right now. If you believe in the sole authority of Scripture to point us towards the Lord, and if you believe that Scripture not only teaches what God expects from you, but also what you can expect from God, then you know that he can turn your bad trouble into good trouble simply because his word tells you so. Somebody know what I'm talking about. It tells you things like weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. It tells you things like he knows the way that I take. And when he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. It tells you things. I'm talking about scripture. I'm talking about the Bible. I'm talking about the word of God. It tells you things like when I am weak, then am I strong. It tells you things like all things work. Somebody is helping me in here together for what? For good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. We know as people of faith that he can turn your bad trouble into good trouble simply because the word of God tells us so. Amen. But we also know it to be true because somebody has lived it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Somebody has read it uh, and somebody has lived it. Yes, sir. And when those two or uh, when those who have read it and those who have lived it become one. Yeah. Then you will have a powerful person of faith before you. Somebody listening to me right now in person or online can testify to the fact that they have lived through enough trouble. Yeah. And they have lived through enough strife. Yeah. And they have lived through enough heartache, depression, and pain to discover that God can fix it. To discover that God can turn it around. And to discover that God specializes in using what was bad in your life for your good. Matter of fact, if anybody knows that what I'm saying is right, you just let me hear you holler, preach, pastor. Uh, thank you for that. David who many believe to be the writer of the text, uh -huh. certainly knew about it from reading it. Yeah. Because he tells you all throughout his writings and even throughout this 119th Psalm that he delights in God's law. And that he has hidden God's word in his heart. Yes, and that he wants the Lord to order his steps yes, in his word. 
And so we know how David felt about God's word. In fact, and my students know that this 119th Psalm is the longest chapter, if you will, in the entire Bible. And it is all about the word of God. Amen. The whole, the whole thing, the whole thing, the whole thing is about the word of God. And in every one of these 176 verses, David finds something to say about God. Amen. Amen. And so we can reasonably deduce that we know how David felt about God's word. But David also lived it. Yeah. Yes, yes. He read about it. Yeah. But he also lived it. Yes, Somebody said he lived it. He lived it. Yeah, he lived it. And he writes our text today from a place of hindsight. Uh -huh. Yes, he writes our text today from a place of experience. Yeah. He writes our text today from a place of personal reflection. Yes, whereby he's able to take a look at what he's read. Yeah. And he can take a look at what he's lived. Uh -huh. And he can see how God used it all together for his good. I was I had somebody thinking with me. And he thought that that was something good enough to write about and to share. And I'm so glad that he did. Because David knows like we know that whenever we are afflicted and whenever we are troubled and whenever we are hurt and in despair, distressed, agony and pain, all that we tend to feel about it is bad, bad, bad. And all you want is for it to stop, stop, stop. But David interjects here. David interrupts that train of thought because David has discovered through his trials and tribulations and he wants to share with you that God is one who loves to work in paradox. Yes, God is one who loves to work in paradox. He loves to work in ways that don't make sense to you or to me. How does it make any sense that if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, yeah. then you can tell the mountain to move? How does it make any sense that you are to love your enemies? How? doesn't make any sense that when he gives you every day, he only wants you to keep one day holy. How does it make any sense that when he allows you to receive every dollar, he only wants you to give him ten cents, ten pennies out of every one of them? How does it make any sense that the penalty of your sins Sins that you committed and sins that you performed can be wiped out and wiped away by receiving another man's blood. I'm trying to tell you like David that God is one who loves to work in paradox and in ways that don't make no sense to you or to me. Which is precisely why he can turn your bad trouble into good trouble. David, in a point of personal reflection, looks back over his life yeah. and says that it was good. It was good. <laughs> I wonder if anybody yeah. has gotten there yet where you can look back at it today and you can, like David, say it was good uh -huh. for me to be afflicted yeah. so that I might learn your decrees. Now, David is clear here. Yeah? in making a correlation between his affliction being good and God's decrees being learned. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Think with me now. He didn't just say that it was good for him to be afflicted. Yeah. But he's making 
a correlation between his affliction being good and God's decrees being learned. Uh -huh. And I believe, I believe, church, I believe, Come on now. I believe that if we're going to mature in the faith, to where we can understand that our storms do a lot to form our relationship with the Lord. If we're going to mature in the faith, to where we can understand that our valleys do have a lot to do with shaping our communion with the Lord, then we have to accept that our trouble only has value if it takes us towards Him. Yeah. Stay with me now. We got to accept that. We got to accept that. We got to get to a place where we can accept that our trouble only has value uh -huh. if it takes us towards him as a person of faith and as a person who believes in the undeniable power of God to change your life. If you allow your trouble to take you anywhere else besides to the Lord, then I'm here to tell you you're wasting the experience of your pain. As a person of hope and as a person who builds their hope on things eternal, if you permit your trouble to lead you anywhere else besides to the feet of the Lord, to the feet of the King, to the feet of the Master, besides His throne and beside His word, then you are wasting the experience of your pain. As a person of spiritual conviction, and as a person who trusts that God is in control, if you let your trouble lure you anywhere else besides God's law, precepts, statutes, commands, and decrees, then you are wasting the experience of your pain. Somebody feel me? Because after all, if you're going to have pain, don't you want to get something from it? Come on now. Huh? Amen. If you're going to have pain, don't you want to get something out of it? I'm saying if you're going to have pain, don't you want to be made better for it? Yeah. Yeah. Then check this out. If that's the case, then you need to stop wasting the experience of your pain on complaining. Stop wasting the experience of your pain on whining. Stop wasting the experience of your pain on pity parties. Stop wasting the experience of your pain on woe is me. Stop wasting the experience of your pain on self-loathing and self-deprecating thoughts. Stop wasting the experience of your pain on drinking. Stop wasting the experience of your pain on drugging. Stop wasting the experience of your pain on picking fights with everybody. Stop wasting the experience of your pain on discouraging and depressing others and get busy learning about the Lord. Get busy learning about his word and get busy learning what he desires and requires from you. Oh, if you want to maximize the benefits of your troubles, then you need to minimize the distractions of your faith. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to say that again because somebody needs to hear that. I know it's different and it goes counter to what you naturally feel because you just want the pain to be done. But if you want to maximize the benefits of your troubles, then you need to minimize the distractions to your faith. The distractions that you allow to mess up your faith are the distractions that cause you to stumble when you should be standing. They cause you to sink when you should be rising. And they cause you to turn away when you should be turning towards the Lord. David said that it was good for me to be afflicted. Why? So that I might learn your decree. So that I might pick up something new. So that I might pick up something I did not know so that I might pick up something that will make me more useful for the kingdom of God. Oh, yeah. Folks on. talking about 
I'll be back to church when I get myself together. Listen. Listen, listen, listen. If your trouble is not leading you to the Lord. And if your trouble is not leading you to his church. And if your trouble is not leading you to his word. And if your trouble is not leading you to prayer. Then you are wasting it. Because God doesn't want you coming to him only in good times. Yeah. Oh, but he wants you coming to him in bad times too. Uh -huh. Which is to say that all things ought to lead you towards the Lord. Good times and bad times ought to lead you to the Lord. Happy times and sad times ought to lead you to the Lord. Sunny days and stormy days. Ought to lead you to the Lord. Laughter and tears ought to lead you to the Lord. Health and sickness ought to lead you to the Lord. Clarity and confusion ought to lead you to the Lord. Wealth and poverty ought to lead you to the Lord. Joy and pain ought to lead you to the Lord. Listen, if nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, then nothing should separate you from a commitment to his holy word. That's why the Bible, that's why the Bible, oh, that's why the Bible took the time to say in everything, you are to give thanks. In good things, you are to give thanks. In bad things, you are to give thanks. In joyous things, you are to give thanks. And in painful things, you are to give thanks. And it also says whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, you ought to do it all. That's what you ought to do because everything, everything, somebody say everything. Because everything that happens in your life, be it good or bad, God expects it to bring you back to Him. <laughs> either way, you hear Him there, church. Family of God, either way, whether it is good or bad, God expects it to bring you back. To him because when it does that, yeah. you'll learn how to praise him even from the lion's den. Yeah. Because when it does that, uh -huh. you'll learn how to praise him even from the fiery furnace. Yeah. Because when it does that, uh -huh. you'll learn how to praise him even when you're going through. Yeah. You'll learn how to praise him even through your tears. Yeah. You'll learn how to praise him even when you struggle. Yeah. You'll learn how to praise him even from the battle. You'll learn how to praise him even from the cemetery. You'll learn how to praise him even when folks on your last nerve. You'll learn how to praise him even when you're all by yourself. You'll learn to praise him even when you're sleeping with the enemy. You'll learn how to praise him even when you're weary, warm, and sad. Because you'll know for yourself that testimonies only come from text. That crowns only come from crucifixion. And that resurrection only comes from death. Yeah. Only God can take a heathen and make him holy. Yeah. Only God can take a robber and make her righteous. And only God, yeah. only God can take the death of a savior yeah. and turn it into salvation for a sinner. All I'm trying to say, and I'm done, is only God knows how to take your bad trouble yeah. and make it good trouble. Yeah. And he does that for his glory yeah. and for your edification. Oh, yeah. But you got to do your part yes, in allowing your troubles to lead you back to him. Oh, yeah. Tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. That's what you ought to do in 23. That's what you got to do. Don't let your trouble wear you out. They try. Don't let your troubles break you down. They try. But keep your eyes stayed on the Lord. Keep your hand on the gospel plot. Be encouraged and continue to fight the good fight of faith. Because thou art 
with you. Even though you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with you. Anybody going through it right now? Well, you know the blessedness of that is that you're saying and agreeing that you're going through. We're going through. We're not staying there. We're not pitching our tent, but we are progressing through with the help of the Lord. But that trouble comes to turn our hearts towards the Lord more and more each day. Good trouble. Amen. Amen. The door of my father's house stand open to you today. Good trouble. Good trouble, I call it today, because that's a term made popular by the late Congressman John Lewis, who was a freedom fighter who talked and walked for justice. Oh, yeah. He talked about the importance of getting into good trouble the significance of getting into necessary trouble, even the kind of trouble that might turn things around. Oh, yeah. And Dr. King would agree that it was necessary for a righteous man to challenge man's law whenever man's law was incongruent with God's law. Yeah. And if that meant they would be in trouble with men, then so be it. So as we celebrate and remember the legacy of Dr. King, I thought it prudent to point out that there is a good trouble uh -huh. that is necessary even for our spiritual lives. Oh, yeah. Because it can create and bring about the change that we need within oh, yeah. that will help us better serve those without. Oh, yeah. There might be someone here who has not yet experienced the turnaround power of God's hand. And there is no more mighty way for you to experience it. How he can take the bad trouble of sin and turn it in to salvation than through what he offers us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. There might be someone here who has not accepted him, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and personal Savior. If that's true for you, we invite you to come forward now. As they say, to give the preacher your hand and guard your heart. You ought to come on and confess that you are in need of a Savior. You know you can't make it by yourself. You're tired. You're worn out. So many things you've tried to do have not been successful and have not come to fruition according to your desire. Flat out and in no uncertain terms, you need Jesus. Yeah. Everybody needs Jesus. Amen. And you do know that it's possible to live in need of some things that you don't even realize you are without. Amen. Jesus is one of those things, if you will, one of those persons that you need in your life if you're going to have life now and forevermore. Oh, yeah. And so this is why we come to church, we come to worship, we come to praise. We come to listen to the word and to pray and to sing, but we come ultimately to offer Jesus Christ, to extend the invitation of discipleship that you might walk in line and in accordance to God's will for your life. Amen. There might be someone here or online who needs to open up their heart and allow Jesus to come in and to make your life brand new. To get you on good ground with God, your creator. To get you in right standing with God, your keeper. To justify you with God, your father. Jesus Christ can do that for you. And that's who you need to accept and receive into your life. What a beautiful time in history at the top of this new year still. Still fresh in 23. What a beautiful way it would be to commence this year, to inaugurate and crown this year with the acceptance of Jesus Christ into your life. Amen. Another hymn of the church. Why don't you help me? I will trust it.
Yeah. Uh-huh. 